Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we're revisiting automated animations and 3D Canvas yet again. In our last installment, we highlighted the amazing new particle effects system that Ripper has implemented into 3D Canvas and how you can leverage that with automated animations. As you can see in the background, these effects are absolutely gorgeous, and what's even better is that now I didn't have to set up any of these. They are ready to go with the help of the module D&D 5e animations. So to get started, let's take a look at the modules that we need. We're of course gonna need the 3D Canvas Suite, and we're gonna need automated animations, including Sequencer and one of the JB2A modules. Then we're also gonna need the D&D 5e animations. Fortunately, this does mean that this is exclusive to D&D 5e, but we've got a workaround for that later in the video. Before we dive into setting this up, let's take a look at the Automated Animations Global Recognition menu. To get there, open up your settings and select Automated Animations and then launch the menu. This will show you the Global Recognition menu, which is how all of the different animations are applied. As you can see, it's got a few different entries, but it's not very big. So keep this in mind when we go to the next step. In order to get all of these great animations, we're gonna make sure that we have D&D 5e animations installed, and then we're gonna go into the settings and hit this update menu. This is a list of all of the effects that are going to be modified by this. Selecting update will apply it, and we'll get those little blue notifications up at the top that were complete. You'll notice now that the automated animations menu is a whole lot more populated. Almost every single attack, spell, or effect in 5e is present here, and all of them are configured in the 3D Canvas tag. This is thanks to some really hard work from Cosmic Afro for setting all of these up and providing this recognition menu. So let's take a look at some of these in action. We've already seen a few earlier, but this will show off even more of the effects. Every single one of these has been hand-picked and designed and tweaked in order to look incredible in your games. This is a lot of value for very little work when it comes to your 5e games and adding some insane style and flair to any kind of 3D combat or setup where you're going to be using spells. You'll notice that they even have the sound configured for all of them, so this is really great to use right out of the box. As you can see, these effects look absolutely stunning on both ranged and on target spell effects. But these also look gorgeous with melee attacks as well. So we have some battle axes that feel incredibly chunky as we're slamming into this bandit captain. And from another angle, you can see that the directionality of the swings changes up randomly as well, which adds a nice immersive element to combat. And this applies to just about every melee weapon you can think of. For example, here's some more with daggers that are being stabbed in a variety of directions. And these are just great ways to let your melee and martial characters get in on the fun of automated animations and really make those big hits feel nice and impactful. Of course, our archers are also in on it. And here we can see this assassin shooting the bandit from afar with a crossbow. And a great effect that you'll notice is if we zoom in and rotate a little bit, you'll notice that all of these bolts and arrows are sticking into the bandit, turning him into a pincushion. Now these are all incredible effects, but say you want to add a little bit of personalization. We're using the global setting right now, which we could customize by going into our settings once again and launching that menu for automated animations. And this is gonna let us customize say Firebolt for all of the different players and NPCs in our game. And we can use this to alter a variety of things. For example, we can change the type from Runic Shot to one of the other effects, modify the sprite, which that's going to vary from effect to effect. Of course, the most common customization that you'll make is changing colors. It's a really easy way to personalize things. And there are a host of other options for really tweaking the particle effects that you have, including explosions, sounds, and token animations. But what if we want to really make this personal, or our player really wants to make this personal? We can instead open up from an actor and go to the spellbook, and then edit the spell, and you can see there is this AA tag up in the top right. Right now we have a little green bar showing that a global match has been found. 
we can turn on this customize item in order to configure it. We notice that there's no information here. So what we want to do is copy from the auto recommendation, which is going to pull information from the global recognition menu. So we select yes, all of that data is right there. So we're starting with the baseline of what's in our global recognition menu. I'm going to move things out of the way a bit so we can see as we update this what things look like. So if we go into our configuration, we can change the colors and make this a different style. And again, this is probably the most common way that you and your players are going to want to customize an effect to really make it feel like your own. So if we shoot at this bandit, the colors are now blue and green. And whenever you make these changes, make sure you click submit at the bottom. You can go ahead and leave it open rather than using submit and close, and we can make some other alterations. For example, I can add some curvature on this and I can slow down the projectile a bit to further customize it. And of course, again, I gotta make sure I hit submit in order for those changes to go through. So if we try again, then we have a little bit slower projectile and some arc. There's a lot to these different options and you can really customize them heavily. So check out our previous videos on automated animations in 3D Canvas for all of those effects. As a quick rundown, speed just affects how fast things go. Repeat is how many times you want this to repeat. Delay is going to be how long to wait after certain effects. I suggest you generally leave these alone as the timings are a little precise with these pre-configurations, but feel free to dive right in. Scale is going to govern the size of the different particles. Arc is going to have different repeats, so curvature. Alpha determines the transparency of the beams. Gravity affects whether the particles are affected by gravity a lot or not. Duration is how long the animation takes. Life covers how long a particle lingers on the effect, so how long something hangs in the air. Then we also have the emitter size, which is going to be kind of how wide of a opening you can think of for where all the particles come out. Rate is how fast the particles go. Rotate towards will make things curve towards the target, similar to if you have arc on. Auto size is going to govern your emitter size and scale for the most part, and basically make sure you always get a good consistent result. If you want to tweak scale and emitter size, you'll need to turn this off. And then finally, we have on center here, and that's going to make sure things go towards the center of mass of your target, useful for certain effects or against large targets. You can also customize the sound, and you can change the source file, start time, duration, volume, etc. And then explosion is basically a, another copy of the original effect with a whole lot of options for changing the types here. And you can of course change the sprites and the colors. And there are a kind of truncated version of the options previously. So you can further customize the explosion to really suit what you're going for. Again, a lot of these are perfect right out of the box, but in case you wanted to make some changes, there you go. Token animation is these little actions that we do at the beginning and ending of spell effects. So when we cast the firebolt, this little swipe effect that we're using on our mage and the little shake that's happening on our bandit are being governed by this. So you can customize that. And it's also a really easy way to add some personalization to these spells. So if I submit and close and I fire off my firebolt, it's got all of my customization on it. If I really like this and I want all of my firebolts to work like this, I can open up the automated animations menu for the spell again and now copy it to the global match rather than from it, and that would merge everything up. Alternatively, if I decide I don't want this customization anymore, I can simply turn off that customize item tag, and we're gonna be back to the global version of Firebolt. So it's super easy to customize things further if you want to, and most importantly, your players can do this themselves so they can add a lot of personalization to their kit without you having to set that up. And if you wanna, again, customize globally and you know from the start you're gonna do globally, you can do it directly from the settings for the global auto recommendation menu. And you can customize everything there is. So all of these melee items have objects. Then there's also settings for ranged and on token effects. It's important to note that these are the only three categories that 
3D Canvas hands over to automated animations to govern, the rest of these are all handled by other systems. So for example, I'm gonna cast this cone of cold and after I positioned everything with 3D Canvas, manipulating that template however I like, and I actually cast the spell, it's going to shoot out this particle effect developed by 3D Canvas, and that's not gonna be governed or customized with automated animations. You can see this from another angle that you can really adjust this very finely in 3D Canvas, which is super nice and gives you that extra big impact whenever you cast the spell. As I mentioned, this is gonna be governed by 3D Canvas. So to make sure you have these on, go to your settings and in 3D Canvas, just make sure that you have the enable effects and shaders on, and then go into your configure global 3D Canvas settings. And right here on, above the auto 3D templates, we have enable template effects. Having those on will allow this to work. And unfortunately right now it only works for D&D 5e, but Pathfinder support may be coming soon. Speaking of Pathfinder, it is a bit of a shame that the D&D 5e animations module only works for 5e. However, since this is all based off of name, we can do a bit of a workaround for this. And this also applies for other systems as well. For example, most systems use some kind of naming on this. If you click on this menu manager, you can export the menu here to a JSON file. So what we can do is we can create a 5e world, enable our automated animations and D&D animations modules, and then we can export this menu. Then in our Pathfinder or other system world, we can then use the merge menu or overwrite menu functions to either combine this with our current automated animations list or completely overdo it or overwrite it with this respectively. This isn't a perfect solution, but it does give you a really good starting point if you have a system with a lot of similar items. It may only really help you on the melee things, but that's still useful. And again, it's name-based, so you can often just change things to a similar effect. All right, that's gonna do it for this update video on 3D Canvas automated animations and the D&D 5E animations module. Hope that you've enjoyed this and that this has really shown you how easy it is to get these amazing particle effects on your character's spells, attacks, and abilities now in 5e and with a little bit of work around also in other systems. So let me know in the comments if you're going to use these out of the box or if you're going to do a little more customization on your end. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. If you enjoyed this content, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest videos on the channel. And if you really enjoyed this, consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also gain access to the modular systems and scenes that we've made, including this gorgeous 3D version of the Delian Tomb. Again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming, and have a good one.